We're surrounded every day of our lives by artificial intelligence. It's all around us, ubiquitous, ever-present. Or it isn't, and it never will be. Now, which of these is true depends on how we define AI, and the definition has changed a lot throughout history. The standard definition casts AI as a machine that's intelligent like we are. And while we have some notion of what this means, an artificial brain of some kind that accepts similar inputs as ours does and produces similar outputs, like walking, singing, or writing excellent YouTube videos, but we can't precisely place its boundaries because we're not exactly sure what our own intelligence really is. People often think this idea of AI is pretty recent, dating back to maybe Carl Capek's invention of the word robot in 1921, but no. Examples of this concept of automata that can do things intelligently as humans has been with us for millennia. Ancient Greek legends have it that Hephaestus, the god of crafting, built mechanical maidens that could speak, and that Pygmalion of Cyprus carved a statue of ivory that came to life. So this concept of intelligent automata is nothing new. The only problem is, the nature of their invention in ancient times has mostly been just making up a story. Sorry, ancient Greeks. Modern history has produced less fraudulent robots. As early as the 16th century, things like the Katakuri mechanical dolls could serve tea, fire arrows drawn from a quiver, or even paint Japanese kanji characters. These were ingenious clockwork toys, but they aren't actually any more intelligent than a Tamagotchi. But this is an excellent point. Before the technology became widely understood, things like this were assumed to be golems animated by magic to have wills of their own. They were assumed to be artificially intelligent creatures, in much the same way as we understand AI today. But as soon as it became understood that these creatures operated in purely physical ways, people stopped viewing them as possessing any sort of intelligence. The same phenomenon happens over and over again. We set the bar for AI as being some nebulous goalpost of behaving as we do. And each time that someone figures out how to make a machine do that, that particular act is demoted from the rarefied world of artificial intelligence to mere computation. Now let's look at everyone's favorite example, playing chess. It requires critical thinking, problem solving, or bonk clouds. Back in the 1970s, when chess engines were first in their infancy, there was a lot of hype about how they would one day supersede humans. For years, critics said they probably never will, that the cases that the chess engines were tested against were highly artificial and extremely simplified. Now fast forward 20 years later, and Deep Blue famously defeated Grandmaster Garry Kasparov. But the funny thing happens when it did. Suddenly it's not intelligence anymore, it's just computation. Oh, it generated 200 million positions per second, and that's basically brute forcing. It doesn't use intuition the way humans do. That doesn't count as intelligence. It's just computation. But the same story repeats itself with each subsequent breakthrough. When DeepMind's AlphaGo beat Lee Sedol, the world champion of Go, by giving AlphaGo an intuition mechanism to make instinct-based evaluations like humans do, the goalpost shifts again. We realize intuition is just pattern matching. AlphaGo is not real AI because it's too narrow, and it only works when the problem is on rails for it in this way. And it's given a model of the game and it has perfect information about how everything works. That's just not realistic in solving the kinds of problems that human intelligence is built for. If you go back far enough, you can find people making these same sorts of predictions, but for things that we simply take for granted today. Everything from spell checking to algebra who are all clearly only dual by the minds of man and a few unusually intelligent women. So where do we draw the line? Even in the world of biological intelligence, scientists disagree on where intelligence begins or what should qualify. Trying to draw this line of what counts as real intelligence has proven counterproductive. Instead, we've resorted to seeing intelligence as a natural problem-solving framework, which has a broad spectrum of properties. Take, for example, perception, memory, and learning. Some creatures exhibit these, but it's still debated whether they are truly intelligent. For example, a cellular slime mold uses these to explore its surroundings to search for nutrients. Scientists train these in labs to solve complex mazes and even navigate models of the Tokyo Underground. Do these skills demonstrate intelligence, or is it just a computation? 
just the biologically involved mechanism that mirrors the flood fill algorithm. It's hard to draw these lines, which is why it's more useful to separate out these properties. Certainly there are properties of intelligence which modern AI systems don't yet have. Our latest and greatest are only just now learning things like long-term planning, tool use, and creativity, but they face several constraints in achieving levels of generality that their biological counterparts do. But do we have to wait until computers are intelligent in the same way as humans are before we think of them as actually intelligent? And what happens then? When we see that the last unsolved properties of true intelligence are just computation, what would that mean about us?